एवरीवन आई एम डिंपल रंगीला टुडे वील टॉक अबाउट चाइल्ड सेंटर टीचिंग लर्निंग प्रोसेस सो लेट्स फर्स्ट टॉक अबाउट व्हाट इज चाइल्ड सेंटर टीचिंग लर्निंग प्रोसेस स्टूडेंट्स लर्न बाय सॉल्विंग सम रियल लाइफ प्रॉब्लम्स दे कॉन्फ्रंट इन देयर डे टू डे लाइफ द टीचर्स रोल इज टू क्रिएट अ सिचुएशन इन विच अ प्रॉब्लम में डेवेलप एंड हेल्प द स्टूडेंट्स टू आइडेंटिफाई इशूज कम अप विद टेंटेटिव सोल्यूशंस try those solutions and come out with the best possible solution to the problem some of the child centered methods that we are going to discuss today are playway method project method problem solving method and discovery method so first we'll talk about playway method play is a natural instinct of children and is the natural expression of their needs engagement in play activity is for enjoyment and recreation rather than for serious or practical purpose play allows children to use their creativity while developing their imagination physical cognitive and emotional strength play is important to healthy brain development it is through play that children at a very early age engage and interact in the world around them thus playway method involves a spontaneous action challenges is interesting for children child has intrinsic motivation for play related behavior it also brings about self imposed discipline it leads to cooperation and collaboration when children are together in groups it gives a freedom in the direction and they work without fear and as it is not imposed so let us now see how is work different from play work is considered to be difficult whereas play gives pleasure work is something that is imposed by others whereas play is voluntary physical works bring tiredness with it whereas play is an enjoyable experience work is controlled whereas play gives more freedom and autonomy to the child so let's see the advantages of playway method playing games is a natural instinct with the young children they not only participate in the game spontaneously given freedom they can organize the game effectively themselves children can create new games they devise the rules for playing the game and observe strictly the self created discipline this helps to nurture the creative skills of children along with the development of several life skills like problem solving leadership rational thinking self expression communication skills cooperative learning group living etc learning thus becomes natural joyful and energizing experience it provides sufficient scope to the child to fulfill their physical emotional and cognitive needs it helps to build healthy student teacher and student student relationships principles of playway method so there are certain principles that are involved in the playway method let's look at these principles one by one first is the principle of unfolding innate potentials so play if uh, children are provided with a stimulating environment there are toys and other materials available for the child to explore it is kind of a favorable condition that we are creating for the child which in turn nurtures the innate potential of the child principle of natural instinct play appeals naturally to the child as they internalize the experiences that they are having principle of complete freedom since play behavior is something that is enjoyable and if there is no restriction the children enjoy the freedom that is given to them during free play principle of activity so play is one such behavior which involves active involvement of children and they are not there as passive beings principle of pleasure so play is a pleasurable and enjoyable activity as we talked about in the previous slides thus it sustains the interest of the child in the activity principle of creativity in play children have several alternatives so at times if they get bored of doing and repeating one activity all together they have lot of alternatives that are there which brings lot of innovation and spontaneity principle of responsibility when children are playing and they are together with other children they devise their own rules and also assume responsibility now we look at the role of teachers in playway method so as a teacher you are a facilitator for the children in the class so one must help the students to initiate games suggested by them or in developing new games with the involvement of students create a learning environment 
to make the children feel that learning is a joyful experience. Prepare relevant teaching learning materials after designing the learning activities. Arrange the learning activities from simple concept to the complex. Be a guide, supervisor and a leader for the students during the learning process. Evaluate the students through playway activities. Evaluation should not be ignored. Note that the Montessori and the kindergarten teaching methods were developed based on the playway method. Yet, there are certain limitations of playway method. Let's uh, look at these. This method is considered to be more suitable to the pre-primary and the primary le level of students. The contents and concepts of all subjects cannot be introduced through this method. Sometimes a few children may give more importance to playing games and than learning through playway method. So there, as a teacher, it's your role how to make them strike a balance between play and the learning that they have to do. Next method is project method. Let's look at the characteristics of project method. So there is a problem. Every project is intended to solve at least one problem which is perceived by the student. Becoming aware of the problem is the first step in the formulation of the project and it is also a very important step. Next is objective. The success of project method lies in the student's understanding of its objectives that why they are doing a particular activity. The objectives with which the students pursue the project are intimately associated with their real life situations and would be fulfilling some of their cherished desires. Activity. After defining the objectives, it is a teacher's duty to create a learning environment. Students begin to learn through self-planning, group discussion and group activities. So here the teacher's role is to be a facilitator. Reality, it is necessary to create real life activities for effective learning of children. Liberty, in project method learning takes place naturally so students perform activities freely and without any compulsion. Utility, the learned knowledge must serve the immediate needs of the students in their present life. It is necessary that the project method must be useful to the present needs of the child. Integration Since a project is based on the real life problems, real experiences for carrying out the project and no real experience involves the knowledge of only one subject. So, as a teacher, one has to combine the knowledge of many subjects appropriately for successful completion of the project. Integration of subjects learnt in the classroom is the basic requirement in a project work. Democratic values. While conducting a project, the students working in a group need to cooperate with each other. They need to respect each other, value each other's opinion, assume and share responsibility of the work that they are doing together. So, the advantages of project method are The project method is based on the principle of active learning. So, the students are not the children are not seen as passive beings. They, are, they have an active agency and voice. The student gets totally involved in the activity which helps in enhancing his or her knowledge, understanding and skills in real life situation and ultimately in developing a holistic personality. Since all the activities of a project are related to the real life experiences, each of such activities is meaningful to the student. The student enjoys full freedom in conducting a project. This develops self-confidence to act and also promotes a sense of responsibility among the students. The student gets acquainted with the types of work which he or she is expected to perform in future. Thus, the project method helps the student in his or her preparation for a future life. The student gets the scope to imbibe several social qualities like cooperation, teamwork, group affinity and sacrifice through project work. Interest and motivation for the project activities are spontaneously created and there is no external pressure or persuasion that is required to attract the students towards learning. Completion of the project gives individuals a sense of accomplishment which in turn encourages them for further learning. Now we will do the problem solving method. So, there is a model that is called the ideal model by Bransford and Steen in 1984 it was given. It follows a number of steps. So, the first step is to identify the problem along with the children, defining the problem through thinking about it and sorting out the relevant information, 
exploring solutions through looking at alternatives, brainstorming in which the children are asked to give as many ideas regarding the problem that are coming to their mind and then checking out different points of view and multiple perspectives on that problem. Acting on and the strategies and working out the strategies, looking back and then evaluating the effects of your activity. Since 1980s, researches on problem solving have also inclined to be more context based. By context, we mean the, uh, the situation in which a particular problem is posed. That means the problem a student faces while studying content is always specific to a particular context or a situation. Therefore, the solution to that problem has to be sought within the context or situation. The nature of the problem might be different from another problem faced in any other context. In 1983, Mayer defined problem solving as a multiple step process where the problem solver must find relationships between the past experiences and the problem at hand and then acting upon a solution. Another model of the problem solving process was given by Gick in 1986. This model identifies a basic sequence of three cognitive activities that are involved in the problem solving approach. First is representing the problem which includes calling up the appropriate context knowledge or the previous knowledge that the learner has, identifying the goal and relevant starting conditions to the problem. Solution search includes refining the goals finding alternative solutions or thinking of hypotheses and developing a plan of action to reach the goal which is very important step. And finally implementing the solution includes executing the plan of action and finally evaluating the results. As a classroom teacher while following the problem solving method you are advised to consider the following steps. Anticipate or identify problems. Use information from diverse sources to arrive at a clearer understanding of the problem and its root causes. Remember we talked about the context. So the context uh, is different. So we need to have our uh, problems and the information should come from diverse sources. Generate alternative solutions. Evaluate strengths and weaknesses of alternatives including potential risks and benefits and the short term and long term consequences. Select an alternative that is most appropriate to goal, context and available resources. Establish criteria for evaluating effectiveness of solution or decision. Thus, problem solving method involves reflective thinking reasoning because we are bringing in the past knowledge and results from achievement of certain abilities, skills and attitude. You should provide such situations and activities from which a problem emerges. It involves a definite procedure of confronting the problem, finding out its solution inductively and lastly testing the adequacy of the generalization by a deductive approach. The heuristic method. The word heuristic is derived from the Greek word heuriska which means to find out or to discover. It is also known as the inquiry method. According to Professor Henry Edward Armstrong who introduced this method for teaching science, Heuristic method is a method of teaching which involves a placing of children as far as possible in the attitude of a discoverer. It is a method in which children discover and find things by themselves. They are placed in the position of discoverers or inventors. Problems are provided to the students. The students are expected to take observations and conduct experiments as per the instructions. Conclusions are drawn by the students and hence they are introduced to reasoning skills from their own observations and experiments. So remember the child is the discoverer and a mini scientist in this case. Thus the stages of discovery methods are identification of the problem firstly, experimentation and observation, problem solving and finally evaluation. Let's discuss these characteristics of heuristic method. A problem with its objective mentioned clearly is assigned to the class and each child is made to feel responsible for finding out something for himself or herself. This will make the classroom inclusive as every child will be responsible for finding out an alternative option. Each child tries to acquire information about the problem from different sources. He or she is free to go about and discuss the problem with the classmates and teacher. The students can seek guidance from the teacher. Help is provided whenever the students feel the need. However, 
teachers should try to get everything out of the students by an inductive method. As many questions as possible should be allowed to arise from child's own observation and at times the teacher should also put questions which will stimulate the pupils to know more about a particular problem. In this way, the power of observation, experimentation, reasoning, etc. are developed in the students. They learn how to get, gather data, interpret data, formulate tentative solutions and to arrive at a desired conclusion. Now, the difficulties faced, all the students may not participate in the teaching learning situation. Very few of them may ask questions related to the problem given. So, it is the responsibility of the teacher to make them ask any question that they have regarding the topic or help them explore the topic more. Sometimes the students may stop questioning. Then the teacher has to encourage them to ask more questions. At times the students would need some reference materials. So the teacher should be prepared beforehand with the reference materials in forms of books, newspapers, journal articles. Sometimes the students would need some apparatus or equipments to conduct an experiment. So again the teacher has to be prepared for that. Sometimes the students may not formulate a hypothesis relating to the problem. In that case, again, the teacher has to be there to guide them in a way that they formulate the right hypothesis and work on it accordingly. At the end, I would like to conclude by saying that a teacher needs to uh, use all these methods in the classroom with the children as they have to decide that for different activities, playway method, project method, problem solving or the discovery method might work differently. So they have to decide that for a particular activity, which of these child-centered methods is the best and use it in the classroom. Thank you.